was like the simplicity of like the age. Like when, what age can we start expecting um, this character development and start nurturing it in our children? You know, is it as young as one or two or is it four or five? You know, where, where can we kind of see that? Starting? You know, what's interesting because as a pediatrician, I mean, I've been a pediatrician for 20 years and I had three kids in three and a half years. So I sort of lived it on the parenting side, but I also <laughs> actually owned an educational child care center for 10 years, which a lot of people don't realize as well. Um, you know, I've been wow. so deep in this space that to me it's the most obvious thing that it starts from the day children are born. But what's striking, you know, I, and again, it's, it's, you know, what do parents believe and what do parents see because they haven't had my professional experiences, right? Um, you know, this is where, as you probably saw, Primrose Schools did a national survey of parents and found, no surprise, 92% of parents, especially in this day and age, thought that positive character traits were important. But what was striking, and we're getting to the age part here, is that almost half of them thought that preschool was too young to start intentionally you know, introducing and teaching and cultivating social emotional skills. And to me, that wow. speaks to a huge missed opportunity and also a chance for me to help parents understand what an incredible window of opportunity the first five years are, and to your question, from the day children are born is my answer, right? In terms of when we can start fostering and cultivating really important skills that we all care about. Definitely, definitely. So I mean, just kind of expanding on that, like why is character development so important? Obviously we want them to be good people, but right. beyond that, well, you know, it's an interesting thing because you won't find, I mean, I hardly find a parent that doesn't think the word character or good character is important. But when you really dig down, what does that mean is, is one question, right? And I'm talking about the kinds of things that everybody agrees with, kindness, fairness, compassion, generosity, you know, um, you know responsibility and, and working well with others and things, right? But when we even get down to a lower level, because this is where people struggle because they don't realize that when we say, what is the foundation? We can see the house, but what is the foundation for that house that we want to build if we're going to use the metaphor? And we don't see the foundation or we don't mm -hmm. understand it, but what we know is at the core of being having good character is the ability not only to sort of be aware of yourself, right, which actually is important, right, the sort of the me skills, mm -hmm. the self-control, self-awareness, and that's being able to control your emotions and your behaviors. Mm -hmm. Once you develop that, which we know is in the you know, first couple years, but really doesn't kick in in terms of being able to even control your own behaviors. We don't stand a two-year-old on the side of the road and say, don't run across it and let them be, because they're impulsive, <laughs> right? I mean, people can relate to that. Yeah. But starting around two and three years of age, it's also that extending beyond me, right? Because you need to be able to control your, yourself and how you relate to the world. But it's also then expanding mm -hmm. on that and saying, how do you start to read other people, right? It's not just all early literacy skills. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the emotional intelligence that goes with understanding people's perspectives, um, how other people think, you know, is, you know reading mm -hmm. somebody else's emotions and moods. And you can get that from books. You know, you can read a book with a toddler and be talking about, this child looks upset. Why do you think the child's upset? What kind of face is this? It's a happy mm -hmm. face. Those sort of literal, and I mean that literally and figuratively, right? Because it's in a book, but it's also in the real world those are building yep. the skills that factor directly into positive character, right? And that's where people don't tie those together. Yeah. Lots of people believe in talking, cooing, singing, and reading books to babies, but they don't realize that that's helping focus as much on who they become as it does on what they know and their reading skills, right? So it's, it's both. Both are very mm -hmm. important. One has been overlooked on the side of social emotional skill development compared to what we know now is possible. Awesome. So now, what about um, like stay-at-home moms that um, keep their children at home till school age versus you know some parents that put their children into an early education program prior to the school age years? You know, what are some things that we can do at home on our own, and and what are some things to look at in programs? You know, when we're when we're looking to place our children, um, you know, to help us while we're working outside of the home and such. What can we look for? Um, you know, to make sure that they're helping build that character development as it, well and supporting our initiatives at home. If there's a single thing, and this is going to be easy because there's one takeaway for parents on this one I think is really important, is we know that a caring, responsive adult plays a critical role in a child's foundational development in this area, right? And in fact, babies' brains mm -hmm. are not sponges like we all believe, right? What's striking is from the neuroscience of this, we know that they become sponges only when babies engage socially in a caring, you know, with a caring, responsive adult. What that means for parents is that what we've always been told, we are our child's single most important and first teacher is true. And I've added to that, we are the you know, true CEOs, which are chief engagement officers, right? I mean, 
engaging okay. with your baby is critical. So as much as people want to know sort of the equivalent of flashcards on the IQ cognitive side, what flashcards can we do? Having caring, okay. nurturing interactions with young children is really important. Now to add to that, because you've asked about parents who struggle with either their kids don't have the opportunity to be in an educational childcare setting or they're wrestling with should they be, here's where it's important. The way I look at educational child care center or a nurturing child care environment, first and foremost, it needs to be nurturing, right? If we know that that's important, then what you want to look for is a partner in this sort of bigger mission. So in my center, and like I said, I owned a primrose school for 10 years. What I needed people to understand was I was going to be their partner, and we had this shared mission, right? This 92% believe positive okay. character traits are important. What I also wanted them to know is that I and the curriculum I was using actually intentionally and purposefully made it possible not only just for kids to play with other kids, which is a great way to start learning and, and practicing these skills, right? You have to interact with other people mm -hmm. and other children to learn we skills, right? You can't learn to relate to other children yes. if you're never around them. But it also gave them peace of mind that what we all care about so much was being built in and continued when, when our kids weren't in our own care for parents who worry about it. Yeah. So in terms of picking a provider, first of all, needs to be nurturing, right? It needs to be consistent, and that's absolutely true. But it also needs to be based on good child development. I've had somebody recently ask me, what about, you know, they said that their toddler, they were told when they took them to child care that their toddler was selfish. And here's what I'll tell you, as, you know, as much as we all worry about it, because again, this is what parents worry about in terms of, I don't want to raise a selfish child, right? Um, is that it's yeah. not appropriate to say a toddler is selfish any more than it's uh, appropriate to worry about spoiling a baby. Okay, because it is mm -hmm. developmentally appropriate for a child to still be very focused on themselves and how they fit in the world and what they want and when they want it and how they're going to get it, right? So that is, yep. if it's a 15-year-old, yep. it might be selfish, but 15 months old, it's not developmentally appropriate because until the age of two or three, they're not really building in and outwardly demonstrating the, the we skills, the, the other people skills and sharing and playing well with others and communication skills that they need. Gotcha. So they're still working on the internal workings. Exactly. I actually just got back from uh, my son is 20 months old in a daycare center, and I went over there to help them cook for their Thanksgiving dinner that's happening tomorrow. And it's very entertaining to see these little people interacting, and they they have their own little environment, and it really it's really great to see them, you know, interacting with each other. And you know, sometimes it's not all good. <laughs> Well, you're, you're, making, like me miss my, you're making me miss my primrose because for 10 years I had the benefit of nearly 200 uh, kids, you know, some part-time, some full-time, where that was one of my favorite things was for parents to come in and see that in this warm, nurturing environment where you're intentional, kids can learn these skills well before preschool. And it's fun, but it's also a chance yeah. for them to practice them. They don't have to get them all right. And that is part of the developmentally appropriate side. If a child hits or bites, we know that's going to happen as they build their impulse control mm -hmm. skills. Um, but learning to play and interact and care about other people and, and be responsible and things is really, again, it makes you, you know, as a parent, it makes you very proud when you see that. So it sounds like you're in a good setting. And that's my hope for all parents, whether they're doing it at home or whether they're choosing a partner in that sort of shared mission in a child care setting. Wonderful. Well, I hope that is the case for all of our members, of course, as well. Um, can you um, share with us some uh, uh, where we can get more information, where I can send our, our members? Absolutely. Well, you know, because of my uh, my opportunity to partner with Primrose, I can tell you that on the Primrose blog, so it's primroseschools.com forward slash blog, you can find information about the survey, you know, and it's really intriguing to see what this national survey of parents believe, worry about, care about. But it's also where you can find more information about sort of this deep amount of brain science, early education, developmentally appropriate, you know, sort of practices that's really important for parents. Mm -hmm. The other thing I will tell you is that I just have finished and now have a book coming out called The Toddler Brain. Nurture the Skills Today That Will Shape Your Child's Tomorrow, which really takes sort of a much deeper look at this than we have time for today, but even at the developmental milestones yeah. and the activities you can do. And again, I wrote it for parents, but it can be applied to, if we believe that this is important for parents to understand and be able to take advantage of, it applies to the other caring, nurturing, responsive adults that will be in your child's life in a child care setting as well. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to check it out. Thank you so much for Thank chatting you. with me today. And uh, I know our members are going to appreciate it, too. Great. Thanks so much. Have a great day. You too. Thank take you. care. Bye.